The Institute for Fiscal Studies has warned that there is no room for tax cuts or increased spending ahead of the next general election. But the warning comes as the UK's tax burden rises significantly. It's predicted that 4.5 million more of us will be dragged into higher income tax thresholds by 2028 because of higher levels of inflation. Um, so do we need to prioritise tax cuts? I mean, 70 years, the highest rates of tax cuts. I mean, it's not easy for any of us, Lynn. What do you make of this? Should they cut taxes now, give us all a break? I don't think it's realistic to say immediately. We've just come from, you know, pandemic where he gave loads of money out to so many businesses that needed it almost overnight with regards to furlough. And many people, how, how do you think that we're going to fill that gap? It wasn't just free money. But at the same time, I think uh, if we want to see growth, we're going to have to see tax cuts, um, you know. So many people have left this country as well, 12,000. Mm, Last yes. year, 1,500, according to Migration Consultancy. And many people say tax the wealthier or whatever. But it's not necessarily wealthy. People with assets amounting to 830,000 in pounds. That could be just, you know, a two, three bedroom house mm, in London mm. now. Uh, those people are moving away because of these extremely high taxes. And the top 5% of uh, earners are the ones that pay 50% of the taxes. So where will we get that amount of money if people are driven away with these high taxes? Good point. Emily, what do you make of this? No, there should no, there shouldn't be any tax cuts. I mean, look, we're on the countdown to a general election next year. It's either going to be probably next May or next October. I think the government is, is in a terrible bind. They're, they're under, you know, Rishi Sunak's under a huge amount of pressure from some of the more right wing, even more right wing Tory MPs <laughs> than the normal Tory MPs to, to, to cut taxes. And obviously the Conservatives have always been traditionally the party of low taxes. But what happened a year ago, if we can remind everybody, when Liz Truss said, as our Prime Minister, she promised all these unfunded tax cuts it sent the economy into absolute freefall. You know, the banks were going um, bonkers, private phone calls to Liz Trust. She lost, she was, you know, ousted as Prime Minister within like 42 days, I think, mm. because of these unfunded tax cuts, because suddenly the market was like, this is completely ridiculous. Everything's going to fail. We can't do this. And of course, what do we see after that? Inflation rose hugely. Mortgage rates rose hugely. If you have lots and lots of tax cuts, obviously it increases inflation, which makes it expensive for so all of us. So do you think never? So I think the Institute, and it's, and it's the Institute for Fiscal Studies saying this. I mean, actually, to be fair, the Paul Johnson director of the IFS said Britain was in a horrible fiscal bind, leaving either, you know, the, the Tories, if they win again, or an incoming Labour government with very little room to radically change tax and spending plans because, he said, the price of our high levels of indebtedness, failure to stimulate growth and high borrowing costs is likely to be a protect, protracted period of high taxes and tight spending. And the other problem is our cost of debt. Because of inflation mm. rising, mm. our cost of debt is so much more. And so we are having to spend a lot more of our, of our cheese, of our pie that the, that the government has to play with on servicing that national debt. And so inevitably, I think whatever colour your party, red or blue, sorry, Green Party or Lib Dems, <laughs> but, you know, whatever colour your political party, you, there's not really much can be done and they can't increase public spending either. Are you saying never to cut them then? Because if you look at Scotland and Ireland, Scotland have higher taxes for higher earners and they've had lower growth than us in England. If you look at Ireland mm. now, then they've had lower taxes and more growth. So we have to we have to be balanced with this. Like I said previously, mm. we, we are not in the uh, situation to have tax cuts now. But I do think in the next year or two, once inflation comes down, we need to look at the country of growth and growth cannot occur with high taxes. Well, I think one of the problems in our current situation is this fiscal drag. So the, the Chancellor has kept, Jeremy Hunt in this case, has kept the rates at the bans. Um, I think they, he's frozen them for the last couple of years. So, you know, the rates where you pay, you know, um, you get your... 12 and a half grand, you know, don't pay any tax on, then you pay 20% up until I think, is it like 52,000? Then over that yes, you pay yeah. 40 yeah. And this has been frozen so, while more people have been dragged exactly. into Exactly. Those rates have been frozen, more people have been dragged into those tax bans. So that's mm -hmm. partly why more people are paying more income tax. But I can't really see that any Chancellor is going to be able to change that. Because Ever? So we should just remain the country of high taxes forever? But they're this not is, high. But, these, but, the, but taxes this is also aren't high. Uh, when, when I was on a couple of weeks ago, these are people The 50% tax ban was just, got rid of. It's not just the wealthy, it's people that are your middle earners that have managed to just about, you know, make a decent living for themselves. They're being hit incredibly hard with higher taxes. Let's, and so... Uh, 
Let's see what some of those people out there are actually saying about this. We're going to go to um, Eileen in Lancashire first. Good afternoon, Eileen. What would you like to say? Good afternoon. I'm on my pension and this year I've had to start paying tax because we got a rise in our pension. So I have to pay £139.20 tax a year, which is not a lot to a lot of people. But I have to manage a house on my own for, with £13,148.52 a year. And the council tax is above £1,000 a year. And then you've got your gas and your electric and your water rates and everything else. So I think having the tax allowance not not rising over the years has been difficult for me. And, and you're not alone, Eileen. An awful lot of people are in this situation as well. People that aren't wealthy. And, and as Lynn pointed out earlier on, you might on paper be wealthy because you've got a property that's worth so much. But that doesn't make you cash rich. So would it help you cope if they did actually cut taxes now before the election? Well, it's just a case of making the allowance greater in line with inflation. Yeah. It hasn't gone up. Yeah. Yeah. since uh, something like 2019. Yeah. No, you know, no. So, I mean, it's difficult managing on less money than you should have. I mean, I was very grateful to receive a rise this year because, you know, I haven't had it before. But then when you get money taken off you and you've got to manage, you know, I mean, I'm a good manager, but that's just because I'm very careful with yeah. my money. Yeah, no, exactly. And we, we all have to be. Eileen, thank you very much for that call. And maybe there are other ways we can consider, um, Emily, raising mm. the money and, and still cut taxes. I mean, sort of like, you know, maybe foreign aid. We could cut down on foreign aid at the moment. We could tighten the tax loopholes. There are a lot of big companies in this country who are bending the rules. No one's doing anything illegal, but yeah. bending the rules and getting away with things. Or tax maybe, avoidance, or, not evasion. Yeah. It, exactly, loopholes. Big um, corpse online. Well, I, yeah. I agree. I mean, actually, that's a very good point, Dawn. You took the words out of my mouth because I think the UK missed out on two billion, two mm. billion pounds in tax last year due to tech firms. Seven of the biggest US headquartered tech companies, including Apple, Microsoft and Google, we're not saying they've done anything No, wrong. no, no, loopholes. not saying loopholes. loopholes. <laughs> um, they are estimated to have paid 750 million combined in UK taxes and corporation tax and digital sales tax. But... Much clever, financially whiz kid, accountantly minded people than I have done the math and that they have estimated the tax they should have paid was 2.8 billion mm. instead of that 750 million. Yeah. So obviously that's a huge differential. I mean, we're talking like 1.5 billion mm. that they have not paid, obviously totally legally. And surely shouldn't we be going after that tax? Now I know, I don't want to, I don't want to anticipate what Lynn may say, but I, I know obviously we have to encourage investment from, you know, from which we do, which which companies. to be fair is what Labour have said they will do. Yeah. They will offer business incentives um to grow the economy. But that was kind of what Liz Trust was saying back in the day as well. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I know people vehemently disagree with me, but I actually supported Liz Trust's vision. The only problem was it was too fast, too quickly, and not the right time. She wanted, she wanted to free fall. <laughs> because it's it was too fast. It, it was, it was like this. She hadn't done a mass. She hadn't done a mass no, 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 Let me give you an example. Go on. If somebody is overweight, you're not going to starve yourself for four to five months. You're going to incrementally cut down on chocolates one day, Chris the next. That was her biggest issue. She tried to starve she took a, automatically. She chucked all the chocolates tried, in the bin. There you go. She should have been a lot slower, a lot more gradual. But her, at the end of the day, we need to see um, refreshing vision. And she had that. It just was the wrong timing. And I, I don't think, I mean, in, in her defence, which I'm not here to do, but putting it on balance, I don't think she explained it. And a lot of other econ yes, economists yes. have said, look, if she'd have explained it a bit better, rather than just saying we are I going agree. to do this, then maybe wouldn't have been the panic. But lots of you are getting in touch on this one. So let's see what you were saying on social media. Uh, Harry, you're on Twitter. And you say, I'm sure Jeremy Hunt will find a way to cut tax. Taxes, maybe stuff like inheritance tax. That keeps coming back, doesn't it? The inheritance tax. Uh, meanwhile, Gavin on Facebook says uh, he will cut, uh, Jeremy Hunt will cut taxes, but only for the rich, nothing for us. 
Ooh, what do you reckon to that? Only for the rich, it's the I'd Tories say, being someone, the Tories. I would love someone to call in and tell me who are the rich. Because as you even stated, if you are a working class individual and you bought your property, let's say, a couple of decades ago and you live in a house now and you're not cash rich, but you sold it, fair enough, you would have maybe 800,000. We're talking about people who have really worked hard, they're middle earners. I would, who are the rich? But for me, inheritance... Call in and tell us. For me, inheritance tax is a bit of a... Um, red herring. Is it, yes, I think it is a bit of a red herring, actually, because not many people have to pay inheritance tax in the grand scheme of things. You get, if my math serves me correctly, you get a million um, before you have to pay inheritance tax if you take in, if you take into you know, account what your house is worth and also what you have in savings. This is a, a couple's joint allowance. Yes. And so actually most people in the UK, again, I'm sure clever, cleverer people than I will be able to come up with statistics, but actually the amount of people in the UK whose estate is worth over a million is probably not that amount. It's about 4% of the pay. I think more um, exactly. people so it Tories. It will be attractive to Tories because they're rich. They are rich. Well, I'm not rich and I, do, I, no, I, I, you I are, support cutting inheritance tax. Uh, one quick answer, very quick answer. What about foreign aid budget? We should be cut that, Lynn. I don't think we should now because Britain keeps on meddling in foreign affairs where we have to then help those countries that we mess up. I, I agree with Lynn. We shouldn't, we shouldn't cut the foreign aid budget. It's I would really, love to, really but let's stop getting involved in international relations at the length that we do. Right, OK.